Pat McGee Trail is 12.14 miles. It runs through seven different communities in the Cattaraugus County. And what it does is it ties those communities together and gives them opportunities for not only economic development, but also for recreation and tourism. We feel that it is a quiet economic generator and it's the reuse of a wasting asset that had been, it was a railroad bed that had been vacant for over 10 years and hadn't been used. And we felt that it would be good for the community and a good opportunity. The project, the way it worked out, we ended up with a wide variety of great partners from municipalities to organizations to the um, county legislators and state senators and such getting involved. And it was a good way to tie all the community together and give them a sense of accomplishment and a sense that they were stakeholders that had the opportunity to have a tide that raised all boats within the community. Initially, when we did this, there was a lot of resistance and a lot of emotion uh, because everybody's concerned about change, they're concerned about what's going to happen in their backyard. What happened is, as they went, we went through the building process, they realized that we did not want to have anything but a great product and uh, that they would enjoy. And what we found was the people that were the most against us, that actually were in your face, we don't like this, now use it two or three times uh, a week in the summer. We literally had people that uh, were totally against it that are now our stewards. We have a steward program for uh, protecting the uh, trail and and for safety in that, and we have approximately 15 of these stewards, and they're the residents along the trail that enjoy it now, and actually participate with us and help us with the maintenance or the upkeep or, or patrolling it, or just making sure that there's safety issues or whatever. And those people, it's sort of like a neighborhood watch, what has happened is is that they'll contact me if a tree, a tree blows down, let's say, or you know that we have some issue on the trail that, and, and such. They also, we have a very uh, a pack it in, pack it out program, and the public has been very, very good at it. But my stewards will go down and just make sure because every now and then somebody will leave something behind. Right. So it's worked out very well. Right now, in the winter time, uh, we use it for cross country skiing, for snowshoeing. Uh, there's hiking in there in the wintertime and also for snowmobiling. In the summer, we have, starting in April, you will have the equestrians, the hikers, the bikers, the geocachers. Those are a, a real interesting group and we have t over 20 geocaches along the trail. And that brings people then to find that it's a game, a, an international game actually. And we have 10 different uh, ecosystems along the trail. So that brings in approximately 150 different birds. They have 175 different plants and trees, and there are 41 different mammals that call that home, including anything from beaver, coyote, all the way up to bear and deer. What it is, is, is one of the things that I think that people enjoyed was that, yes, we can do it that we took, we took something and we made something out of it. And uh, in our county, we're always waiting for the next shoe to drop, the next business to go out. And what we did with this, it proved that they could take control of their own backyard and make it into something that was not only good for them, but good for tourism, good for uh, economic development. We have, along the way, we have five different trailheads. One of the trailheads is a major park at the end of Main Street in the village of Little Valley. There we have a 24 by 48 pavilion, two gazebos, and picnic tables. And you can go down there and it's pleasant in the summer to see 15, 20 people at noon having lunch down there. What they do is they go over to the local supermarket, which was within 50 to 75 yards of this trailhead and they'll buy lunch and then come over and eat it at our facility. So it feeds the local businesses and uh, the other restaurants along the way uh, 
and it also ties them together and has helped their business. So it's a variety of things, but bringing people into the area, and, the, and it's another reason for people to do business with us, but also at the same time, it brings people into the area to see the Pat McGee Trail, to walk the Pat McGee Trail, and what happens is, is that it gives them another reason to come back. And they may not come back for the Pat McGee, but because they came there, and that was their original focus, and then they say, wow, this is a great area. In building a trail, there's always people that have concerns. And there's no reason that you shouldn't have concerns on anything that's going to change your environment or what. But in regards to those concerns, this is America. If you use common sense, if you use good logic, you can come up with a good answer and you work your way through it. And a trail I look at is no different than building a new product, something new for the public. You want to have the very best, you want to have it so that it works well and that so that people enjoy it. And if you do your homework, and let me say that you're going to create thousands and thousands of paper, letters, uh, documents and that in the building of this, and there's some very strict con uh, construction issues in rebuilding a trail like this, and you'll have an architect involved in it. When you get done, you should have a very, very good product that everybody should feel good about, that it should be safe, and it should be... As I look at it is, is that I am not an environmentalist. I feel that I'm a conservationist. You take what you have, and how do you conserve, how do you use it to its best benefit, and for the long run. You create a legacy with a trail like this. This will be good for a hundred years. If, in the event that these corridors, which need to be protected, there are uh, issues in regards to watersheds that need to be protected. There's drainage that needs to be protected. Now. But when you get done with this project, those are protected. They are in good shape. And if down the road the railroads come back in, you have a viable corridor that you can put that railroad in. If you need it for commerce, for let's say fiber optics, a new technology, a water line, a gas line or such, You've got something that isn't going to disrupt somebody's front yard or, and that will be uh, out of the view of the public and that will look aesthetically.